Good day, everyone, once again. So welcome to our discussion on sentence structure. So last meeting, we mentioned the different patterns of sentences. And I also mentioned to you that there are two ways to arrange the sentence. So we have the normal word order, which follows the traditional subject, traditional or the usual subject predicate structure, wherein the sentence always begins with, with the subject. And then we ha also have the uh, inverted word order, wherein the sentence follows the, the verb as the beginning part of the state sentence. Okay, but despite using the the VSO pattern or the uh, or the inverted word pattern, it's still an acceptable uh, pattern in sentence for two reasons. One, to make your sentences in your paragraph to have a different flavor. So you will be trying a different structure in your sentence. So just to have a different flavor in your paragraph. Secondly, for the purpose of emphasis. So you're, you're giving emphasis on, on the action being done by the, the object of the sentence. So usually, if you would like to, to hide the, uh, the subject of the sentence, so you can make use of the, the VSO pattern. So in a casual conversation or in a usual conversation, a face-to-face -face conversation, you are always using the, the VSO pattern. Let's say, for example, when you're giving a command. So let's say, uh, answer the questions correctly. So answer the questions correctly. So I am the speaker and I, you are my listener. Then if you notice in the kind of sentence or in our example, so I do not use a subject because it is implied that as a speaker, I am the doer of the action. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with using the VSO pattern because of those two reasons. Additionally, it's uh, in a uh, conversation, a face-to-face -face conversation when you are giving a command. Okay, so again, uh, we have different ways to arrange our sentences, uh, different uh, patterns that we can use in our sentence. And the importance of the patterns is for us to be aware of arranging the words properly in a sentence. Okay. This time, uh, since we are all aware of the, the patterns of the sentences based on a given structure, so we will now proceed on a, another topic. So for this afternoon, we will be tackling about this. So we will be dealing with common sentence code, the usual errors that we commit when we are writing a sentence. So when we talk of sentence, we have we have to, to take note of three elements. Three elements. So what are these three elements that we have to follow in a sentence? So first is the unity, second is coherence, and third is emphasis. So when we talk of sentence unity, we are pertaining to how the words in a sentence are related in terms of their function, in terms of their forms. So we have to see to it that the ideas are in consonance with the ideas presented in the whole sentence. So I will be mentioning here the different faults, the different common sentence faults, and how we are going to correct those faults in a sentence. So let's have first sentence unity. So the main objective of sentence unity is again to make the statement idea or to make the ideas um, connected with one another, okay? Through following a uh, a form, a parallel form, and a parallel function. So the first sentence fault is what we call sentence fragment. So what is sentence fragment? So it usually happens when there is lack of subject verb agreement and does not express a complete thought. Okay? So for example, so to make sure there is a clear partnership between subject and verb agreement, so it has to be taken into account when you are writing your sentence. 
So for example, although you have been a student for a quite while now, although you have been a student for a quite while now, it sounds, it looks correct, it looks correct, but it does not sound complete because of the, let me have my pen, because of the subordinator although. In our previous in previous discussion, we mentioned of independent clause, independent clause. So here, it's an example of a dependent clause. So we say that if it is a uh, dependent clause, it does not express a complete thought. That means this one is a sentence fragment. Although if we're just going to, to look at the sentence, we have here you, which is our subject, have been which is our verb, and a student for a quite while now, which is our uh, uh, additional information, thus completing the subject predicate structure. And there is a subject-verb partnership here, but because of the subordinator also, it gives us idea that this one is a dependent clause. And what is a dependent clause? Dependent clause is a clause that does not express a complete thought. The very fact that it does not express a complete thought it suggests that there is a subject, that there is lacking a subject verb ability. We need to have a, um, a dependent clause, or it could be, let's try to reshuffle the words without sacrificing the thought of the sentence. So this is a suggestion. You have been a student for a quite while now. So we can remove the subordinate or also. And here in our example, there is a clear partnership of the subject and the verb you being the subject and have been being the the verb in a sentence so as a student for a quite while now i the, uh, the information pertaining to the sentence so now we solve the problem okay so if you would like to still retain all those here like as well if you can add an independent clause so, for example, um, he has been, he has been, he, 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 he is enrolled in the university, although you have, you have been enrolled in the university, although you have been a student for a quite while now, something like that, okay? Zigzag sentence. So, it gives us an idea, zigzag. So, what, what is zigzag? It's, it's something like that, zigzag. So it sounds seems like a letter Z. So what is a zigzag in a sentence? So it happens when a word group does not relate to another. Or when a group does not relate to another. Or when a word group twists or turns away from the main idea. Meaning to say, hindi nagkakaugnay-ugnay yung mga idea sa isang pangusap. Okay, so yung isang pangusap, yung isang idea, minerge yung isang idea, pero they are not actually related so what to do you have to establish a clear relationship between the two clauses by using the appropriate coordinating and subordinating conjunction so i already introduced to you the subordinating conjunction and the coordinating conjunction so you are already aware of how to use them okay so Move the unrelated thought to a new sentence. So if you think that the sentences are not related, what you can do is chop the sentence. <laughs> so move the unrelated thoughts to a new sentence because that can solve the problem. So for example, Professor De La Cruz always arrives late and, expect, and he expects everyone else to arrive on time. So the first idea, but it sounds like, it sounds like a, um, they are not actually related to one another. So, si Professor De La Cruz daw ay lagi late na pong dumalating sa klase. Pero, in-expect niya kanya mga estudyante to arrive on time. So, the problem here is the use of the, the coordinator and. Because when we're using the coordinator and, we suggest that there is a balance of idea. Okay? So, the appropriate way in order for us to correct this is to choose another coordinating conjunction which suggests that there is a contradiction of what Professor De La Cruz wants to happen and what Professor De La Cruz is doing. Okay? You can just use this one. 
Professor De La Cruz always arrives late. Period. He expects everyone else to arrive on time. Or, you can use a coordinator. Halimbawa, Professor De La Cruz always arrives late. But, he expects everyone else to arrive on time. Or, Professor De La Cruz always arrives late. However, he expects everyone else to arrive on time. Okay? So, you can also make use of that in the sentence, in our uh, revised version. However, Professor De La Cruz always arrives late. And then you will insert here. However. Okay? Comma. Small letter. However, he expects everyone else to arrive on time. So that can correct the sentence. Okay? We also have unnecessary shift of point of views or persons. So when we talk of unnecessary shift of views or persons, it happens when a pronoun shifts its POV unnecessarily or when the pronoun does not agree with its antecedent in person. So what is an antecedent? So when we talk of antecedent, it is the uh, it is the subject in which the pronoun refers to. In layman's term, ito yung uh, subject na tinutukoy ng pronoun. Halimbawa, batch uh, na is handling English subject. He is teaching, he is also teaching literature. The, the pronoun there is he. The pronoun there is he. And he is referring to Sir Batch. That means the antecedent of he is Sir Batch. So that's what we meant by uh, the subject in which the pronoun is referring to. And that is what we call the antecedent. Okay, so make sure the pronoun agrees to its antecedent in person and don't switch from one point of view to another. Halimbawa, Sir Batch, ang, ano mo, ang main subject mo, Pero pagdating doon sa susunod ng statement mo, gumamit ka ng they, gumamit ka ng she. Okay? So, nag-shift ka na uh, point of view. So, halimbawa, if one eats sensibly and watches your calorie intake, you should be able to maintain their desired weight. So, ang dami mong subject dito, ang dami mong tinutukoy dito. You have one, you have you, and you have their. But who is really the person you are referring to? Are you referring to only one person? Or are you referring to other person? So it is contradicting. It is uh, quite uh, making us unsure of who the, really the subject is. For whom is the message? Okay. So how are we going to correct this? So there's a need for us to make sure that the, the problem agrees to its antecedent. So for example, if you eat extensively and watches your calorie intake, you should be able to maintain your desired weight. So in this sentence, it is now clear to us that we are pertaining to you, to the, the, the person, you. Or if you will be retaining one, you can use this. If one eats sensibly and watches his or her calorie intake, he or she should be able to maintain his or her desired weight. If you will be sticking to using their, if they eat, sensibly and watch their calorie intake, they should be able to maintain their desired weight. That depends on you. So you'll be the one to clarify which point of view you would like to use. But the, the purpose here is that it should be clear on which antecedent you are referring to, the subject in which you are referring to, which is unlike in our first, in our original statement, uh, there are plenty of pronouns that we use. Your and you and their and then you still have the subject one. So it's unclear. Sino bang tinutukoy mo in your statement? Okay? So, next. That's, so that is unnecessary shift of point of views or persons. Then we have the unnecessary shift in number. There are times where in uh, the pronoun does not agree with its antecedent and number. So, sabi nga, parang subject verb agreement din lang yan. If the subject is singular, the, 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 the noun should be, the verb should also be singular. If the subject is pronoun, the verb should be also in plural form. So, in 
in subject pronoun, it should also be followed. So if your subject is singular, then you have to use a singular pronoun. Clear naman sa atin, ang pinagkaiba ng singular pronoun, tsaka na plural pronoun, or singular subject, tsaka singular uh, or plural subject. Okay, and when we talk of number in grammar, we're pertaining to sing singular or plural. Okay? So, make sure the pronoun agrees to its antecedent in number. So, kapag iisa lang yung subject mo, dapat yung pronoun mo, iisa rin lang dapat. Halimbawa, if one eats, if one wants to be successful at work, you should always act responsibly. One, ang ginagamit mo eh. Pero, bakit you ang ginamit mo? So, Therefore, there is a problem with the, the antecedent here. Kasi nga si you is used in third person, di ba? Okay, how are we going to correct it? If one wants to be successful at work, he or she should always act responsibly. So, we correct it now. Okay. So, halimbawa, gumamit tayo ng, ng proper noun. If, if Joanna wants to be successful at work, they should always act responsibly. They should always act responsibly. I use they to refer to Joanna and Joanna is single, singular, and feminine. So, tama bang gamit natin si they? So, it is incorrect because they is used if are pertaining to a plural subject or plural antecedent. Since, since Joanna is uh, singular, and uh, feminine, so we have to use the appropriate singular feminine pronoun for Joanna. So we should use she. Halimbawa, if one, if Joanna wants to be successful at work, she should always act responsibly. Or halimbawa, if the if the teachers if the teachers want their students to be successful at work. They should also act responsibly. Okay, something like that. So you see that there is a uh, that there is a relationship between the number of the antecedent and the uh, the pronoun. So you have to make sure that their number agree with one another. So kapag singular si subject, singular din dapat si pronoun. Kapag plural subject or si antecedent. Plural, plural din dapat si, si pronoun. So, as easy as that. So, you just have to bear that in your mind. Then, unnecessary ship of tense. So, when, in verb, we have the past tense and then we have the present tense and we have the future tense. So, when we talk of tense in the verb, in verb, we are pertaining to the, the time in which the action happens or took place or takes place or will take place. You know? So, siguro alam naman natin, halimbawa, take is singular, is, is present, took past this, future tense, we use will, okay, to suggest it's a future tense, will, take, okay. So, it happens when there's a shift back and forth between present and past without a reason. So, take note that if the main verb is expressing, is, is expressing a, uh, present tense, the uh, succeeding verb should also be in present tense. Yun ang tatandaan dyan. So, avoid shifting from one tense to another if the time for each action is state is the same. If you begin writing in the present tense, do not shift suddenly to the past or vice versa. For example, uh, while I was sleeping last night, somebody had entered through the bedroom window. Although what and have are both expressed in past tense. But if you're just going to notice yung kanilang uh, structure, was slipping, was slipping, had entered, should be uh, corrected. For example, while I was slipping last night, somebody was entering through the bedroom window. Kasi was slipping na eh. Gusto may suggest that in the past, the continuous action is sleeping. Tapos pagdating had entered, naging perfect tense. So hindi mo pwede dapat pagsangkukin ang present progressive tense at ang past participle tense. So, dapat gumamit ka ng present progressive tense. To make it simpler, halimbawa, uh, 
while I am sleeping, present tense, while I am sleeping, somebody entered through the bedroom window. While I am sleeping, while I am sleeping, somebody entered through the bedroom window. Okay? I am, present tense, entered past tense. Hindi na sila consistent. Okay? So, since gumamit ka ng while, suggest na continuous yung action. So, it has to be correct. It could be, while I am sleeping, somebody uh, somebody is entering through the bedroom window. Okay? So, unnecessary ship of tense. However, there are some instances wherein the consistency of the tense of the verb may not be applied. One, if the sentence is expressing a general truth. When we talk of general truth, it means that uh, it, it's still unchanged. Hindi pa rin nababago. Or, pangalawa, a said idea is still true up to present. For example, of general truth, uh, when you throw an object up in the air, uh, let's say, according to the law of gravity, when you throw an object up in the air, the object falls down. Ginamitan natin according to the law of gravity. So, which is a general truth. Hindi mo pwedeng balian yun. That is already a law of gravity. Natutuo pa rin at tunay. Natutuo naman talaga na kapag binato mo isang object sa taas, uh, babagsak at babagsak ka. That is a general truth. So, always use present tense. Kahit pa ang nasa main verb mo ay nakapas tense. Okay? Uh, another one, uh, as an idea which is still true at, at present. Halimbawa, Cossarsal died many years ago and he is still our national hero. Died, past tense. Is still, present tense. So, you see, in that sentence, gumamit tayo ng past tense, tsaka ng present tense. So, sasabihin niyo, sir, there is a necessary chief of tense. No. Because, yung still the national hero, ay, totoo pa rin ako na. So, hindi natin po pwedeng was our, kasi, hanggang ngayon, siya pa rin naman ang ate national hero. So, yun yung sinasabi ko na, um, if a certain idea is expressing general truth, or an idea that's still true up to present, you should always use present tense, regardless if the tense of the main verb is in the past tense, just like our example. Now, Sarisal died many years ago, past tense. And he is still our national hero. Because hindi ngayon, siya pa rin naman ang ating national hero. Okay? So, pag sinabi mo, um, Mark is handsome. So, hanggang ngayon, ikaw pa pa rin si Mark. Pero pag sinabi mo, Mark was handsome, was handsome, dati siyang guapo. Or, Joanna is beautiful. Kasi, totoo naman, hanggang ngayon, maganda pa rin siya. Pero pag sinabi mo, Joanna was beautiful, dati yung maganda si Joanna. So, that's a nice way to say that the person is ugly. When you use the, when you use the uh, past participle form of is, which is was. Okay? So, that is in the unnecessary sheet of tense. Okay, so take note of those things. Then, uh, unnecessary sheet of voice. So, I'm sure that all of you are particular of the voice of the sentence. So, in the voice of the sentence, we have the so-called passive voice and then we have the active voice. So, when we talk of active voice, the doer of the action and the subject is the doer of the action. And when we talk of passive voice, the, uh, the, the, the receiver of the action becomes the subject of the sentence. And it is commonly expressed using a by phrase in which the, uh, the verb is expressed on its passive form using a, uh, using a past participle form of the verb. For example, a very elementary example, uh, Maria bakes a cake bakes a cake. Maria bakes a cake. So, Maria, which is the subject, 
performs the action bakes. If Maria performs the action bakes, therefore, Maria is, the sentence now is expressed in active voice because Maria, being the subject, performs the action bakes. Now, gamitan natin ang passive voice. Maria bakes the cake. The cake is baked by Maria. The cake is baked by Maria. Is baked. We use the present form is because in its original sentence, bakes ang ginamit natin. Kaya is ang gagamitin. Yung bake doon is not a past form. It is a past participle form. Okay? Pag regular verb, walang problema kasi pareho lang ang past form tsaka past participle form. Naglalagay lang tayo ng ED, di ba? So, kapag a regular verb, medyo doon, nagkakaroon tayo ng confusion. So, is uh, the cake is baked by Maria. Is baked. So, that is in passive form. So, the rule is, do not join active and passive voice in a sentence. It has to be, kung active, active lang lahat. Kung passive, passive lang lahat. Okay? Halimbawa, we submitted the proposal but it was not approved by the president. You will notice in our first clause, we submitted the proposal. So, we is the subject and submitted is our verb. The subject we performed the action submitted and it is expressed in uh, active voice. Active voice siya. Ang ating first clause. Our second clause is expressed in passive voice. It is the subject uh, was not approved is our verb. So, was not approved by the president it is expressed in passive form. So, active tsaka passive pinagsama mo in a sentence. So, when you join these two, that is unnecessary shift of voice. So, it should not be used in a sentence. It could be corrected, it can be corrected if you will be changing uh, one of them into active or passive form. For example, in our example here, we uh, transform them into a different structure. By the way, correct ko lang, did not approve. Okay, let me correct. Did not approve, wala yung D. Okay. So, uh, the president did not approve the proposal that we submitted. So, in our example, we already corrected. So, wala nang problema kasi lahat sila ay naka-passive form, ay naka-active form because the president, which is the subject, performs the action, did not approve. Okay? Gusto ko may music tayo. Balikan ulit natin. <laughs> So, and sense, and then we have the voice. So, kung pwede mo rin gawin yan, uh, we submitted the proposal, but the president did not approve it. So, pwede rin ganun ang gawin mo. Okay? So, we submitted the proposal, but the president did not approve it. Submitted, active voice, did not approve is active voice. So, two active voices na in one sentence. So, that is how to correct this statement. Okay? Okay, the next. Uh, Alas is our shift of mood. Okay, meron ding mga moods ang mga verbs. Eh. So, meron tayong indicative mood, which indicates factual condition or action. Imperative mood expresses command. And subjunctive mood uh, expresses conditional situations. So, madali lang naman sila ma-identify sa isang statement. 
basta kapag sinabi natin na uh, it's a plain statement, suggesting ideas, so it's indicative. It indicates, para, para, para hindi nyo malimod, indicates factual condition. So imperative, nag-uutos, kumang, subjunctive, ito yung mga condition, yun yung mga if clause. If ganito ginawa niya, yun yung magiging result. Result, yun yung subjunctive mood. So, um, in a sentence, dapat kung indicative ang mood na ginamit mo, indicative lang lahat sa isang sentence. Kapag imperative, imperative lang lahat sa sentence. Kapag subjunctive, subjunctive lang lahat sa sentence. Yun yung rule. Okay? So, again, isang buong sentence ang pinag-uusapan natin. Not a paragraph. Because in paragraph, you can mix and match them. But in a sentence, they should be avoided. So, uh, I don't skip meals, but I avoid eating meals with uh, big portions. Don't fill your whole plate with food. Okay? So, dito, ang ginamit kong example ay is two sentences para lang makita natin dito yung um, relationship nila. So, uh, if you're going to correct this one, so you can make use of... Uh, uh, another paragraph, or kasi nga, don't fill your whole plate with food. So, that is a imperative mood. That is in imperative mood. So, I don't skip meals, but I avoid eating meals with big portion. That is in indicative mood. So, uh, para gawin silang consistent, pwede mong gawin na, don't skip meals, and avoid eating meals with big portion. So, don't fill your whole plate with food. Ayan, nakorek mo na siya. Run on sentence naman, it is an error of combining two clauses by inserting only a conjunction between them, leaving out the necessary tama. So, nangyayari ito kapag nag-gumagawa ka ng isang sentence na meron uh, two independent clauses. So, pinag, di ba nga discussion ko sa inyo last night? That whenever you are joining two independent clauses and you use a conjunction, sito itatid to put a comma before the conjunction. So, if you do not put a comma before the conjunction, ang tawag natin yung around in sentence. Halimbawa, all of the guests left the conference room but we stayed to talk to the speaker. So, if you're just going to look at it a glance, at a glance, so the sentence looks correct, grammatically correct. But if you're just going to be more detailed of looking at the sentence or the words in the sentence, so you will notice that we do not put a comma before the coordinator. So, if you do not put a comma before the coordinator, the, the sentence call is called run-on sentence. So, to correct this, simply put a comma. Minor error, but actually, it has an effect in terms of the rule of grammar. Because, again, you, 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 you violate the rule of the, the grammar. Now, ang kabaliktara ni sentence, mamaya pala si comma supplies, we also have fused sentence. It is an error of joining two independent clauses into a compound sentence without using any conjunction between them. So, this time, you join two, two independent clauses but you do not use a conjunction. And that's what makes it a fused sentence. So, I've already taught you on how to identify independent clauses and how to, for, how, how to, to, to arrange sentences if it's a compound sentence and you're using a compound, you're using a conjunction. So, with that in mind, so, it will be easier for you to identify a few sentences. So, halimbawa, all of the guests left the conference room, we stayed to talk. So, ito yung hati niyan. And this is the first clause. And this is the second clause. So, you will notice that on this clause, on these two clauses, they are not joined by any coordinator. So, how are we going to correct that? You can place a semicolon or you can uh, uh, make, you can separate them into sentences or you can use a appropriate conjunction. So, there are three ways. Put a semicolon, just like what I discussed last meeting, that when you're joining two independent clauses, you can also use semicolon. Pangalawa, you can also use a period to separate the two sentences. And third, you can use an appropriate conjunction. But, this, but you have also to think na when you're joining two independent clauses using a coordinator, sito it that put a comma before the coordinator to avoid run-on sentence. So, for example, of using a uh, using a coordinator, all of the guests left the conference room, but we stayed to talk to other 
to talk to this speaker. So we put a semicolon, uh, we put a comma before the coordinator. Or you can remove the conjunction and then use a semicolon in lieu of that. This is now the, the opposite of comma splice. So kung kanina, hindi tayo naglagay ng comma. Pero for comma splice, we put a comma na hindi naman pala dapat maglagay ng comma. So we call it comma splice. Okay? It can also be, we, we, we use a comma, pero hindi tayo naglagay ng conjunction. So, comma splice pa rin yun. So, it's a wrong, it is an incorrect use of a comma in a sentence. We call it comma splice. So, all of the guests left the conference comma, room we stay to talk to the speaker. So, we do not use a uh, conjunction or coordinator here. We just put a comma. So, this makes it an incorrect one. So, you can correct it by uh, using a coordinator, by adding coordinator, or by using semicolon instead. Okay? So, just like this one. Okay? So, that is comma spell. Maling paggamit ng comma. So, next time, next, <laughs> in our next discussion, we will have the, the coherence in the sentence. So, we will talk of coherence. Kung yung unity is unity of, uh, of grammar, unity ng grammar and ideas, when we talk of coherence, this is how we weave together all the ideas in the sentence. Kung paano pagtagi, pagdiin, pag, pag, uh, uh, pag tahi-tahiin ang mga ideas sa isang pangungusap. So, faulty parallelism. It happens when the words or word group in a pair or series are not of the same grammatical forms. Katulad na nabanggit natin, so kapag yan ay adjective, adjective lahat, kapag adverb, adverb lahat. Okay? They might not be similar in form, but they can be, but they should be similar in terms of their function. Pag sinabi natin form, ito yung itsura ng isang salita. Halimbawa, ang verb, ang form ng verb ay present, Let's say, uh, run, ang form niya ay R-U-N. Kapag past tense, R-A-N. Okay? Yan yung natin natin form, yung itsura o yung ayos ng isang salita. Pag sinabi naman natin function, ito yung, uh, ano ba yung role nila sa sentence? Sila ba ay subject? Sila ba ay verb? Sila ba ay conjunction? Sila ba ay adverb? Sila ba ay adjective? Yan yung tinatawag natin uh, function. Okay? form and function. Okay, so balance is structure of grammar. Kalimbawa, only few students can write research proposals efficiently, concisely, and with accuracy. There has to be a comma here. And with accuracy. So, efficiently, concisely, with accuracy, by just looking at it at a glance. With accuracy is not uh, similar to efficiently and concisely in terms of their form, in terms of their form, but if you're just going to, to, to understand the sentence, they are similar in terms of their function. Para sila sa function, pero magkaiba sila when it comes to form. So, kung gusto nyo mas maging maayos ang sentence niyo, gawin nyo siyang similar in form. So, lahat kasi sila, they are describing the action can write. Paano ba sila magsulat? So, they are all adverbs. Efficiently and concisely are in adverb form. With accuracy is a prepositional phrase. So, ad, adverb and adverb, then preposition for, pre, prepositional phrase. So, kaya siya tinawag natin prepositional phrase because of the uh, preposition with. Okay, with. So, prepositional phrase siya. So, in terms of the form or yung itsura ng mga words, ay hindi sila pare-pareho. Pero in terms of their function o kung ano yung tool nila o trabaho nila sa sentence, pare-pareho sila. Because only few students can write research proposal. How? Efficiently. How? Concisely. How? With accuracy. So lahat sila pare-pareho nag-describe kung paano magsulat ang mga iilang estudyante. So if you would like to make them um, coherent in terms of their form, pwede mong baguhin ang with accuracy. At gawin mo, siya, mo siyang adverb form. So pwede ganito. Only few students can write the research proposal efficiently, concisely, and accurately. Kung gusto mo naman lahat ay uh, prepositional phrase, 
pwede mong sabihin na only two students can write research proposal with efficiency, with efficiency, with conciseness, and with accuracy. Kung gusto mo naman ganun yung iyong sentence, gusto mo pahabain, pero kung gusto mo talagang uh, direct the point, then efficiently, concisely, and accurately do it. Dangling modifier. So it happens when a modifier used as introductory clause or phrase is followed by a word that does not modify or describe. So nangyayari ito kapag halimbawa ay yung modifier mo, linagay mo sa unahan, pero wala naman siyang minimodify. Kaya nga dangling, diba parang dangling is parang yung dangling earrings, kaya basta lang siyang nakalawit dyan at ilaw ng galaw, pero wala naman palang sumasado sa kanil siya. Okay, so galaw lang siya ng galaw, nakadangling lang siya. Pero walang sumasalo sa kanya pag siya ay nagadango. So, the same logic is applied here in this sense. So, parang nandun lang siya, pero wala siyang, walang tumutukoy sa kanya, o wala siyang tumutukoy. Kaya ang tawag sa kanya ay dangling modifier. It is a modifier which does not modify anything in the sentence. Okay? So, for example, trying to lose weight, all fatty foods are avoided. So, ang ating dangling modifier dito ay trying to lose weight. Sino? Who is trying to lose weight? All fatty foods? So, yung all fatty foods ba? Nag-lose ng weight? No. Diba? So, um, dapat maglagay ka ng subject dito. Add subject. Sino ba yung subject na mag-lose ng weight? Who is trying to lose weight? So, with that, na-avoid na natin yung dangling modifier. Halimbawa, uh, trying to lose weight, Joanna must avoid all fatty foods. Ayan. Trying to lose weight, Joanna avoided or avoids all fatty foods. So, sino nag-lose ng weight? Si Joanna. So, nagyan natin dito. Again, trying to lose weight, Joanna avoids all fatty foods. Food. Who is trying to lose weight? Joanna. So therefore, you trying to lose weight is describing, is referring to Joanna. Okay? So, po pwede rin gawin mong all fatty foods are avoided to lose weight. So that is a dangling modifier. A squinting modifier. So a word, it modifies a word before it or a word after it. So, it plays the modifier as close as possible to what it describes, avoiding a squinting direction. Ito naman yung, sino ba yung kanyang minimodify? Naliligaw yung kanyang minimodify. So, nasa sentence lang yung minimodify niya, pero naliligaw yung kanyang minimodify. Okay? So, halimbawa, Mark said tonight, he would call me. Mark said tonight, he would call me. So, sino, sino ba yung dinidescribe ng tonight? hindi natin mahinuha, ma sino ba? Para it sounds correct, but uh, squinting yung kanyang modifier. So, so and sino bang minamodify ng tonight? Mark said, he would call me tonight. So, ngayon, mas maliwanag sa atin. Excuse me. Mas maliwanag sa atin kung uh, kung kailan ka matawag si Mark. Si Mark. Okay. So next we have uh, emphasis. So it happens when the important ideas in the sentence do not stand out. So place the important ideas in an independent law and give more space to the important ideas. You can also repeat the keywords. So halimbawa, nobody can deny that the computer technology has had a great impact on the society. So when we talk of emphasis here, we are referring to the what is the main idea in the sentence. So ngayon, ikaw na itong mag-decide na writer kung ano yung gusto mong i-emphasize sa sentence mo. Kung halimbawa, great impact on the society, ang gusto mong i-emphasize, ibagay mo siya sa, sa inahan. Kung gusto mo naman i-emphasize yung nobody can deny the bakang computer technology, so ibagay mo siya sa inahan. So it now depends to you, on you. Halimbawa, kung ang emphasize mo ay computer technology, pwede mong sabihin na the computer technology has a great impact on the society. Pero kung gusto mo namang i-emphasize yung nobody can deny, 
So nobody can deny that a computer boy has had a great impact on society. So it became issues na inahan. Okay? So in addition to that, the emphasis, loose and pens. So it starts with the main idea first and leaves the modifier and other details for last. So halimbawa, the plane landed safely despite the heavy wind and nearly impenetrable, impenetrable fog. So it has to be, despite the heavy winds and nearly impenetrable fog, was more emphasized than the plane landed safely. So again, um, sa loose sentence, ikaw na writer ang magda-decide kung anong gusto mong ibigyan ng emphasis. Kung gusto mo yung emphasis that the plane landed safely, ilagay mo siya sa unahan. Kapag hindi naman gusto mong i-emphasize na sa kabila ng malakas na hangin at uh, hindi na naiwasang hamog, naka-land pa rin safely ang, ang plane. So, kagayon mo siya sa unahan. Okay? So, yeah, that's what we meant by loose sentence. So, again, it may or may not be a sentence fault. That depends on you as a writer on which one you would like to, to emphasize. So, a periodic sentence, again, it can also be may or may not be a sentence form. And it depends on the style of the writer. So, it starts with a modifier and ends with the main idea. As a result of celebrating drinking too much champagne, I felt easy. If you would like to give emphasis on, on as a result of, then the result of something, then you begin your sentence with this statement. Or if you would like to focus on the dizziness or the, the outcome, then I felt busy as a result of celebrating drinking too much champagne. So, pwede ganun ang gawin mo. Okay? Again, that depends on which idea you would like to give more emphasis. Okay, so you have filled in again. You are being with Sir Bachelor and you. And uh, thank you very much for listening. So, in that discussion, we mentioned of the three things that you have to consider when you're writing your sentence. So, your sentence must follow unity. Again, it's the unity of the grammar, the unity of the ideas. And with unity, what comes follow is the, the, uh, the coherence. Because if there's no unity in the sentence, it will be difficult for you to attain um, cohesiveness in your sentence. Because in co coherence, the, the role of the writer or your role as a writer is to connect the ideas. If, the, if there's no unity, it will be impossible for you to connect all the ideas presented. Hence, uh, coherence will be affected. And finally, emphasis. Again, emphasis may or may not be a sentence fault, but it depends on you as a writer on which idea you would like to give more emphasis. So, you can attain emphasis by... Um, by uh, using or by considering unity and coherence okay so is it possible that one element of, the, of an effective sentence can still stand even one of them will be eliminated so the answer is no element it's similar with uh, c6h1206 which is an L, which is a compound name for sugar so, C6H206, so tanggalin mo ang C6, hindi na siya magiging sugar. Same with NaCl, which is a compound name for salt. If you remove Na or sodium, chlorine na lang siya, hindi na siya magiging salt. The same is true with H2O. If you remove hydrogen, so oxygen na lang siya, hindi siya magiging water. So, the same is true with, with the sentence. So, if you remove unity, coherence, and emphasis, any one of them, if you remove any one of this element, then a sentence may not be considered as a sentence. It can be considered as a faulty sentence or an incorrect sentence. Okay, so that ends our um, three-part lecture of the sentence. So we begin our first part with discussing the, the, the different parts of the sentence and followed by the sentence patterns. And now the different faults. In writing a sentence. I do hope that you all gain um, knowledge on how to improve your sentences based on those ideas that I shared in the class. Thank you very much for listening.